It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. I'm Monica Gould, and this is City Beat. Joining me today is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. If you have a question for the mayor, call us at 677-8181 or email us at chtm at arcticradio.ca. To start, what's been happening around the city? Well, same old, same old. We're going to start with road repairs, uh, multi-use paths and spot patches. Uh, the contractors are in town. Uh, they started on Monday doing uh, paving. They're on Thompson Drive right now uh, doing uh, the multi-use paths and uh, some uh, patching as well. So uh, throughout, uh, Cree Road is pretty much done, but they've got some fill-in to do as well I think there's going to be work, some work on juniper today so for drivers uh, please be aware uh, in the preparations they usually take the surface down two or three inches to accommodate the uh, asphalt so there is a slight hole uh, in the patching area so be careful uh, where they're marked uh, especially uh, once the evening comes and the workers are not there um, drive safely and, and be aware of that area and uh, as usual it's uh, lots of large equipment uh, in and around the community so pedestrians be aware of that and drivers uh, be aware of that as well. Now, in regards to that, I have a question from a listener. The road closure on Cree Road and the surrounding areas have led to lots of traffic cutting through the St. Lawrence Church property. As a result, the access road and lawn coming off Deerwood Drive have been badly ripped up. Who will repair these damages and when? Uh, City of Thompson, uh, once the construction is completed, we've been in, in discussions uh, with the Catholic uh, Church. And uh, we, I would, again, uh, ask uh, drivers that uh, the area that they are, are using and the path that they've made is not a drive way uh, please do not use that area but the damage that has been caused by caused by those drivers uh, will be repaired uh, by the city of Thompson uh, upon conclusion the conclusion of the uh, construction okay and another question from a listener is it true Thompson used to own its own asphalt plant if so why don't we any longer wouldn't it be more economical to own one that could handle our paving jobs in a more timely manner and perhaps could be rented out to generate income uh, yes to the first question in regards to we you used to uh, own an asphalt plant um, and uh, from a perspective of, uh, of whether we should be doing it ourselves and renting it out or knowing our own plant uh, our plant uh, over the years fell into disrepair and it was too costly to uh, to replace itself uh, basically the city of Thompson is a maintenance crew uh, we don't have the resources uh, to dedicate uh, two full-time paving operations you'll notice that uh, when the contractors are in here, they work uh, seven days a week when they're here, uh, extended hours, and uh, we would have to take people off of uh, water and sewer and of uh, other uh, areas of work to in order to uh, uh, to work on the on the project. So when you looked at the cost effectiveness of uh, asphalting major programs in in Thompson. The most efficient use is uh, for contractors because we have a short season, because we have a, um, uh, a small workforce, we can't, uh, uh, I guess, economically resource the, the capital projects as you can with, uh, with a contract. So uh, we used to do that uh, and when we did it, other programs suffered in the summer because we were paving. So now we can uh, do other work uh, as the contractors are here to do asphalt work. So that's, that's why we did it, that's the direction that we've taken. Okay, and one more question we had submitted earlier from a listener. Every year it seems like roads are dug up at the start of summer, forcing drivers to drive on poor roads throughout the season when the paving crew doesn't come in until closer to fall. Why doesn't the city dig up roads at the end of summer or closer to when the paving crew is set to arrive? Uh, it's a good question. It's one that we're working uh, with our, our tendering process. Um, this year we were hampered uh, a little more than, than usual because of weather and we were extended. We should have been done by uh, middle of September. Obviously we're into October now and we're just finishing up in the next uh, five to seven days. But uh, the plan is to uh, look at our tendering process. Uh, the problem is that, that the uh, the contractors are from southern Manitoba. There's plenty of work in southern Manitoba, and so we are fit into their schedules. Uh, we have to be a little stronger on our bidding process in regards to timeframes. 
uh, and that uh, our work should be should be done uh, in July and August when the daylight uh, times are longer. Uh, in Winnipeg right now, Southern Manitoba, they'll, the, the contractors will continue to work for at least a, more, a couple more months because of the weather. Uh, we could be shut down next week if the snow comes. So uh, we're working towards uh, a better process, uh, tighter programs, so that we can have the work done uh, earlier in the year. But again, we're we're uh, up against uh, the uh, the paving uh, contracts across Manitoba and uh, Southern Manitoba. There's lots of work down south, uh, and so we have to uh, be competitive to in order to make, get that work to come north. Quick reminder to our listeners, if you have a question for Mayor Fenske, feel free to call us at 677-8181. Uh, you made some proclamations this week. Uh, what were they and what's the goal with them? Uh, I think we had uh, one for prostate cancer that we just finished, and uh, I can't recall the... I believe the other one was uh, Seniors Health Month. Oh, Seniors Health Month, yeah. So basically promoting seniors' health and an awareness uh, for the upcoming month. Uh, and I believe diabetes was in there as well. Uh, and again, it's all it's all about awareness when we do these proclamations to uh, just bring it to the forefront, whatever cause that we are proclaiming on, and to to make people aware of uh, of uh, the issues uh, that that uh, we proclaim, and, and hopefully people uh, get more active or proactive in in, in the causes. For sure. And over the weekend, there was a Thompson Community Foundation gala, and the Order of Thompson was given out. Tell us about the event. And Excellent event. I want to congratulate the organizers uh, from the Thompson Foundation, Community Foundation. Uh, excellent venue. Uh, the caterers did an excellent job. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jeff Lamontang as the MC, and I want to uh, congratulate John Donovan, who was, uh, was named the Order of Thompson. Uh, well deserving, uh, very well deserving gentleman who has been in our community a long time. Uh, first in the school system and secondary secondly in the social services through AFM and continues to be a strong advocate for uh, addictions in our community uh, so I was very pleased to be able to uh, uh, present on behalf of the foundation the award uh, the order of Thompson to John Donovan uh, again well deserving individual and congratulations to John again now at this week's school board meeting there was some debate about R.D. Parker's new smoking area and the the uh, new smoking areas at the back of the school, off school property, six feet from the door. Um, there were some questions regarding the legality of the designated smoking area as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on the issue? Should schools have designated smoking areas? Well, in, in general, I mean, uh, the um, the district is is the the uh, area of jurisdiction uh, for the policies that are set within the within the school system. So, from that perspective, as a, a one governing body, I don't want to. Uh, comment on the other uh, in regards to the decisions on a personal level from a smoking perspective uh, we all know that uh, that smoking is addictive it's an addiction uh, it's a health care cancer causing issue and uh, I think that uh, that provide by providing areas like that I know that legislation in public spaces there's no smoking in, in public buildings there's certain uh, uh, distances you have to be from the public walkway or public uh, openings doorways and so from that perspective uh, uh, where this has occurred is now on to city property onto the Gordon Beard parking lot uh, we've had some issues we've had discussions with the school district in regards to uh, garbage receptacles and and the and the cleanup of that area but uh, the, the overall principle itself uh, again um, I'm a non-smoker uh, I, I, I understand it's an addiction and I understand that those uh, that have had that addiction for a long time that it's tough to quit. Uh, I just believe that at this young age, uh, we are accommodating this addiction and, and in the long term, in regards to preventative health care, it just speaks against it. Okay. And now the city has also been reminding residents about the consolidated traffic bylaw regarding the storage of trailers, vehicles, boats, and other machinery. Uh, tell us a bit about the law and where should residents be keeping their vehicles or trailers? Well, basically you have a couple of options. Uh, in regards to your own property, uh, the vehicles, uh, equipment uh, can't be stored on your front lawn, uh, your front property. Uh, it can be in your driveway. Um, so basically, if you use the, uh, the the line of the front of your of your uh, house, uh, it can't be in front of that line towards the street. It's got to be in the side yard or the backyard. Um, and or the second option is to have off-site storage. Uh, there are no, numerous places around the community that provide off-site services uh, for storage, and that would be include trailers, boats, ATVs, vehicles, and such. So the bylaw states that you can't uh, store vehicles uh, uh, in your front yard, or uh, in fact store them. Uh, uh, for instance, a, a derelict vehicle can't be in your driveway. Uh, so we have bylaw officers that are. Uh, 
going around the community and, and checking that. And it's for a number of reasons. Uh, uh, number one is, is uh, fire protection and access to buildings. Uh, we've seen uh, trailers on front lawns that restrict the access to the front of the building in the case of an emergency. Uh, secondarily, uh, aesthetically, we, we get lots of calls from neighbors who are proud of their properties and, and uh, are quite uh, concerned with neighbors and, and thus we get the call. And so then we send bylaw officers to have a chat with uh, with the neighbor. So we'd like to we, we'd like to be settled be, be, uh, between neighbors, but uh, we do have bylaws that we've been asked to enforce, and and those are the rules. So uh, I encourage everyone to uh, uh, make the right choice, uh, store on the proper uh, sites on your own site, or uh, look to off-site storage services. Now, before we end for today, anything else residents should uh, know? Just a reminder that uh, council meets on this Monday evening uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, the general public is always welcome. Uh, we meet at City Hall at 7 o'clock. We have two uh, times for public input, one at the beginning of the meeting during public inquiries and at the end of the meeting during uh, public question period. So I would encourage anyone that uh, wants to come down and see what's happening on the uh, uh, at the council, they can check at thompson.ca. Uh, Thompson the agenda is, uh, will be posted Friday by 4 o'clock, uh, and the meeting starts at 7 o'clock on Monday. That's this edition of City Beat. Join us next Thursday around 11.30 for more on what's happening around the city and City Hall. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Monica Gould. City.